it is founded by a Danish writer called Martinus, Martinus Thompson. He was born in 1890, and he lived for 90 years and died in 1981. And he explains when he was 30 years old, he's, um, he got a cosmic consciousness. He said it was a kind of enlightenment. His consciousness was open to the spiritual world, or he said he got new senses. He could see things behind life in the spiritual world. He could also observe the laws of life, the eternal principles for life and uh, consciousness. And the last 60 years of his life, he wrote a spiritual science, which was based on his own observations in the physical world, but also in the spiritual world behind the physical world. And in the first place, he called his work for spiritual science. But I think in 1960, he also used another title of his work, and that was Martinus Cosmology, because uh, the subject for his teaching or his writing, that is the whole universe. In a way, you could say that Martinus Cosmology is a theory of everything that exists. There are some in the theoretical physics who are trying to find a law, a principle for the theory of everything. But to me, Martinus Cosmology is a theory of everything because Martinus works with an uh, eternal universe. It has had uh, an uh, eternal past and will have an eternal future. So he, 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 he don't talk about a limited time, but he speaks about eternity. He thinks that organisms, organs, cells, molecules are living beings, but it goes on infinitely in microcosmos. You know, you can say, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, 0, 0 0.0. So there's not a smallest number, and there's not a largest number. One, ten, hundred thousand uh, human beings, planets, solar systems, galaxies, groups of galaxies. So I mean, Martinus takes everything into account uh, in space and time. So, but. Um, he has explained the laws of life. He has made a science of fate. He has made a cosmical chemistry. Personally, I am a chemist, and I know there is laws for the physical chemicals, but Martinus also thinks that all the energies that we use in our consciousness, they are also ruled by laws. And Martinus knew these rules and these laws, and he, he wrote about them, and he think if we learn all the laws for the psychic, the mental part of human beings, we will be able to construct a happy fate. For that reason, he made a science about uh, life and, and, and living. And uh, so in a way, his world picture, his philosopher, or his view on life is based on observation. And in that way, it is a science. Uh, the natural science is based on a method. You should be able to measure all things by physical means. So for them, science is a method in, in which they work. But to Martinus, the truth is science. So he talks about the eternal truth, the absolute truth. And he, he claims that he could experience it directly through his uh, intuitive capacity, that he could experience it directly. But Martinus also writes about Jesus, not because it's a religion, because he would make, uh, in a way, a science of Christianity. That means that uh, he absolutely thought that Jesus spoke the truth. But for lots, hundreds of years, thousands of years, people believe blindly in Jesus. And that's not though that, that bad. I mean, if he, he speaks the truth, it's got good to believe in it. But now the world has become very technical and very uh, scientific. The whole world is very technical and scientific. For that reason, the eternal truth had to incarnate in a new form. So, but the way Jesus behaved, that was correct. Could you imagine that every, everybody on planet Earth behaved like Jesus? It would be a paradise. We would live in peace and harmony and health, and it would be wonderful. 
So it is uh, the purpose of all Martin's writings is to inspire people to practice neighborly love or to behave like Jesus. But people cannot do that today because they think it is stupid, it's naive, you believe blindly in authorities. But then Martinez would explain that is the only scientific way, the only logical way to behave is like Jesus behaved. So Martinez used this expression, when the eternity entered the Christianity, it turned into a science in the form of his world picture, because with this eternal existence, you get the reincarnation and also these psychic laws that he could experience if you have about reincarnation. When the eternal eternity, reincarnation, um, the law of karma, law of fate enters the Christianity, then it becomes uh, a science. So Martinus, he thought that Buddha, Jesus, they spoke the truth, but they taught people who lived 2,000 years ago. They had to be taught in a certain way but now the truth has to be um, explained to scientific. And for that reason, Martinus made what he calls cosmic analysis. Martinus could, through his intuition, experience the truth. But he had to make it accept, uh, everybody ought to have access to the eternal truth through intelligence. So he explained these truths in an in intellectual way, in an intelligent way, and then people can grasp it with their intelligence and all their observations in the physical world. Martinus knew the result, but the truth. But then he shows us all the calculations that are needed in order to come to this truth. So in that way, I really think that Martinus' cosmology is uh, a, a, a science. But his last 10 years, when he was from 80 to 90 years, he was writing on a book called The Third Testament. So. He, 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 he would uh, sort of um, complete Christianity. He would uh, conduct the Christianity to perfection. Now it's 2,000 years since Jesus lived. And what has the result been? In one way you could say the Christian countries are the biggest warriors. Are there any other people or countries that have a stronger military force than the Christian countries? So the, you have not reached the final victory of Christianity. But Martin Soy does his job to um, conduct to this uh, final victory of Christianity. And in a way, Martinus' book, his main work is the Book of Life, Leavitt's Bow. And it was uh, in seven big volumes. And to me, it is a handbook in observation of life. You can have books about plants, and then you can read about the plant. You can observe them. It's easier to learn the, 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 all the flowers and the plants to know when you have such a, a manual. But then Martinus had such a manual about all phenomena uh, in life. And I have been studying Martinus for 40, 50 years since I was a teenager. And I have never observed anything that contradicts Martinus' analysis. But I have not, with my personal senses, experienced everything in Martinus' cosmology. But up until now, I have only had his analysis confirmed. So. With this, um, in this way, I am a kind of a spiritual researcher. I make a research through my everyday life, and then I, I look upon life through the analysis of Martinus. Is that contradi is a contradiction or not? But I've always had it confirmed. So to me, it's really a spiritual science. But Martinus then, between eight and nine, decided to call his whole work for the Third Testament, because he wanted sort of to make a science out of Jesus' behavior. And in a way, the Third Testament is a continuation of the Bible. And what Martinus wanted, that was to contribute to eternal peace on this planet. But in order to do that, it should be shown in a logical, in a scientific way, it pays to be good. And you can only be happy when you make other people happy. But if you have a one-life theory, then you become very egoistic and you want to experience the biggest success and happiness in one life. And then there is a struggle about the resources on planet Earth, just like in the jungle. So it's very important to make it um, a science that it pays to be good. And then you have to have eternal life, reincarnation and karma before you can understand it pays to be good. So in a almost kind of 
humor humoristic way, he said, my mission is to show that it pays to be good. But it is a teaching about moral, morality. He wants to teach people to practice neighborly love and to show this is the only logical way to behave. And his uh, idea about Christ is that he was a perfect human being. He was a model. He is a kind of ideal for us. But through the evolution, we will also reach the Christ stage. So we are evolu on, in our evolution, we are on our way to perfection. And Martinus wants to stimulate this uh, kind of evolution.